What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Brandon from Walker's Woodworks. I have a box build coming up and it's gonna have finger joints in it. To make those finger joints, you need a jig, which is known as a box joint jig. So I'm gonna show you how I make them super simple in the shop with scraps you probably already have laying around and a simple miter gauge that comes with pretty much every table saw. Let's get to it. I start out by cutting a strip that's the same width of the blade that I plan to use for the box joints. In this case, it'll be a quarter inch wide. I actually cut a couple strips, just a little bit different in size, so I can select the one that fits best later on. Then over at the miter saw, I cut about a two inch piece off of each strip. Then I switch from a regular blade over to my dado stack. And like I said, this one's gonna be a quarter inch wide, so I just need the two outside blades. Then I take the pieces that I cut off the strip and set my blade height to just a little bit higher than they are. Once that's done, it's time to set up the sacrificial fence that will turn into the jig. I just use a piece that's about 20 or 24 inches long, doesn't really matter, and about four inches tall. Clamp it to the miter gauge and make a cut. Make sure it's flush with the table saw bit. Then out of the two pieces that you cut off the strips, figure out which one fits the best and then glue it in. I just usually use CA glue with activator. Works pretty good. To get the gap correct, you just use a piece of the same strip that you put in the jig put it between the blade and the pin, slide it over to where it's just touching, and then clamp down the jig to the miter gauge. Once that's done, you can attach the jig to the miter gauge with some screws and washers. Once it's all secured, you can make another cut. Then set the table saw blade height to just a bit higher than the thickness of your material. That will allow the fingers to stick out past the edge enough so you can sand them back flush once it's all together. I always put tape on the back side of the piece to prevent tear out. For the first cut, the piece should butt up against the pin and then slide the piece over the pin to make the other cuts and repeat that until you get to the end of the piece. I actually had to stop and trim my pin down with a chisel because it was a little bit too tall and that was caused by not using the same material for my test pieces as my pins, but it ends up working out. All right, the most important part of the process is this. Take the first piece, flip it around and put it on the pin, and then take your second piece, butt it up against the first, and then make a cut. This sets it up so the blade will cut the opposite slots of the first one and will allow them to fit together. Once that first cut is done, you just put it over the pin where it's cut out and then continue to make cuts and move it each time the same as you did to the first piece. All right, now that I got the tape off, I can go ahead and fit them together. You wanna to be careful if you end up with a small finger like this because this could break off very easily. This just depends on how big your workpiece is, but a lot of times you'll end up with a kind of off-sized one. So if it was a little bit smaller, you would obviously eliminate it and that'd be ideal, but most of the time you end up with something like that. So you just wanna carefully put them together. Should be fairly tight. 
and that looks pretty good. There's some gaps in here because a couple pieces of the ply broke off, but these are just demo pieces, so I'm not that worried about it. Looks like it's fitting together pretty good. Got these protruding here, as you can see. Hopefully you can see. That's what you want, so that way you can sand it all flush once it's all together, rather than these being shorter than your piece, then you'd have to sand down and you'd get a dip and it just wouldn't look very good. So that's how I make the box joint jig. Now I can move on to my project. That's the way I make box joint jigs. It's fairly simple. There's a lot more complicated ones out there, but I like to keep it simple in the shop. I just whip one of those up anytime I need to do box joints, which isn't all that often, so I don't really need like a big fancy dedicated one. But uh, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments below if it helped you out. And if it did, maybe check out that video right there. We'll catch you on the next one.